Xinhua News Agency English pronunciation, or New China News Agency is the official state-run press agency of the People's Republic of China. Xinhua is the biggest and most influential media organization in China, as well as the largest news agency in the world in terms of correspondence worldwide. Xinhua is a ministry-level institution subordinate to the Chinese central government, and is the highest-ranking state media organ in the country alongside the People's Daily. Its president is a member of the Central Committee of China's Communist Party. Xinhua operates more than 170 foreign bureaus worldwide, and maintains 31 bureaus in China one for each province, autonomous region, and directly administered municipality plus a military bureau. Xinhua is the sole channel for the distribution of important news related to the Communist Party and Chinese central government, and its headquarters in Beijing are strategically located within close proximity to Zhongnanhai, which houses the headquarters of the Communist Party of China, the State Council and the Office of the President. Xinhua is a publisher as well as a news agency. It owns more than 20 newspapers and a dozen magazines, and it publishes in several languages, besides Chinese, including English, German, Spanish, French, Russian, Portuguese, Arabic, Japanese and Korean, also publishing in cyberspace. History The predecessor to Xinhua was the Red China News Agency, Hongsei Zhonghua Tongzun Shi Hongs Zhonghua Tongzun, founded in November 1931 as the Chinese Soviet zone of Ruijin, Jiangxi Province. It mostly republished news from its rival Central News Agency CNA for party and army officials. The agency got its name of Xinhua in November 1935, at the end of the Long March which relocated the communists from Jiangxi to Shaanxi. By the outbreak of the Second Sino-Japanese War in 1937, Xinhua's reference news not only translated CNA news from the Kuomintang, but also international news from agencies like TASS and Avis. Xinhua first started using letterpress printing in 1940. During the Pacific War, the agency developed overseas broadcasting capabilities and established its first overseas branches. It began broadcasting to foreign countries in English from 1944. In 1949, Xinhua followed a subscription model instead of its previous limited distribution model. In the direct aftermath of the Chinese Civil War, the agency represented the People's Republic of China in countries and territories with which it had no diplomatic representation, such as British Hong Kong. In 1956, Xinhua began reporting on anti-Marxist and other opinions critical of the party. In 1957, Xinhua switched from a journal format to a newspaper format. The agency was described by media scholars as the eyes and tongue of the party, observing what is important for the masses and passing on the information. A former Xinhua director, Zheng Tao, noted that the agency was a bridge between the party, the government, and the people, communicating both the demands of the people and the policies of the party. People's Daily, for example, uses Xinhua material for about a quarter of its stories. In 2018, the U.S. Justice Department ordered the state-run Xinhua to register as foreign agents to combat Chinese propaganda operations among other activities. Reach Xinhua delivers its news across the world in eight languages – Chinese, English, Spanish, French, Russian, Portuguese, Arabic, and Japanese, as well as news pictures and other kinds of news. It has made contracts to exchange news and news pictures with more than 80 foreign news agencies or political news departments. Xinhua is also responsible for handling, and in some cases, censoring reports from foreign media destined for release in China. By 2010, the agency had begun converging its news and electronic media coverage and increasing its English coverage through its wire service. Xinhua acquired commercial real estate on New York's Times Square and is developing its English-language reporting staff. Xinhua has also started an English-language satellite news network. <laughs> Internal media The Chinese media's internal publication system, in which certain journals are published exclusively for government and party officials, provides information and analysis which are not generally available to the public. 
the state values these internal reports because they contain much of China's most sensitive, controversial, and high-quality investigative journalism. Xinhua produces reports for the «internal» journals. Informed observers note that journalists generally like to write for the internal publications because they can write less polemical and more comprehensive stories without making the omissions of unwelcome details commonly made in the media directed to the general public. The internal reports, written from a large number of countries, typically consist of in-depth analyses of international situations and domestic attitudes towards regional issues and perceptions of China. The Chinese government's internal media publication system follows a strict hierarchical pattern designed to facilitate party control. A publication called Reference News, which includes translated articles from abroad as well as news and commentary by Xinhua reporters, is delivered by Xinhua personnel, rather than by the national mail system, to officials at the working level and above. A 3 to 10 page report called Internal Reference is distributed to officials at the ministerial level and higher. One example was the first reports on the SARS outbreak by Xinhua, which only government officials were allowed to see. The most classified Xinhua internal reports are issued to the top dozen or so party and government officials. Headquarters and regional sectors The Xinhua headquarters is located in Beijing, strategically located within close proximity to Zhongnanhai, which houses the headquarters of the Communist Party of China, the State Council and the Office of the President of the People's Republic of China. The Xinhua News Agency established its first overseas affiliate in 1947 in London, with Samuel Chink as publisher. Now it distributes its news in Asia, Middle East, Latin America, Africa through more than 150 affiliates, with regional headquarters in Hong Kong, Moscow, Cairo, Brussels, New York City, Mexico City and Nairobi, plus a United Nations Bureau. <laughs> Hong Kong Xinhua's branch in Hong Kong was not just a press office, but served as the de facto embassy of the PRC in the territory when it was under British administration. It was named a news agency under the special historic conditions before the territory's sovereignty was transferred from Britain to China, because the People's Republic did not recognize British sovereignty over the colony, and could not set up a consulate on what it considered to be its soil. Despite its unofficial status, the directors of the Xinhua Hong Kong branch included high ranking former diplomats such as Zhou Nan, former ambassador to the United Nations and vice minister of foreign affairs, who later negotiated the Sino British Joint Declaration on the future of. Hong Kong. His predecessor, Zhu Jiatin, was also vice chairman of the Hong Kong Basic Law Drafting Committee, before fleeing to the United States in response to the military crackdown on the Tiananmen Square protests, where he went into exile. It was authorized by the Special Administrative Region Government to continue to represent the central government after 1997, and it was renamed the Liaison Office of the Central People's Government in the Hong Kong SAR. On January 18, 2000, retaining branch chief Jiang Enju as inaugural director. The State Council appointed Gao Siren Gao si Ren as the director in August 2002. After the liaison office was established, Xinhua Agency was reconstituted as a bona fide press office. <laughs> Cairo Xinhua opened its Middle East Regional Bureau in Cairo, Egypt in 1985. In November 2005, Xinhua News Agency opened a new office building alongside the Nile River in Cairo's Mardi district. Vientiane Xinhua opened a bureau in Vientiane, the capital of Laos, in 2010. It is the only foreign news bureau permitted to permanently operate in the country. Topic: Controversies. Topic: Overview. Topic bias and political correctness Both foreign and domestic anti-government critics have routinely criticized Xinhua for its political correctness and favorable portrayal of China's state policies. 
In 2005, Reporters Sans Frontières called Xinhua the world's biggest propaganda machine, pointing out that Xinhua's president held the rank of a minister in the government. The report further stated that the news agency was at the heart of censorship and disinformation put in place by the government. There have been calls for Xinhua to register as a foreign agent under the Foreign Agents Registration Act in US. In a 2007 interview with The Times of India, then Xinhua President Tian Kongming affirmed the problem of historical setbacks and popular perceptions. Newsweek criticized Xinhua as being best known for its blind spots regarding controversial news in China, although the article acknowledges that Xinhua's spin diminishes when the news doesn't involve China. During the 2003 SARS outbreak, Xinhua was slow to release reports of the incident to the public. However, its reporting in the aftermath of the 2008 Sichuan earthquake was seen as more transparent and credible as Xinhua journalists operated more freely. After the Beijing Television Cultural Center fire, cognizant of Xinhua's tardy reporting in contrast to bloggers, China announced the investment of 20 billion yuan to Xinhua. The vice president of the China International Publishing Group commented on this, saying that quantity of media exposure would not necessarily help perceptions of China. Rather, he said, media should focus on emphasizing Chinese culture and the Chinese way of life to convey the message that China is a friend, not an enemy. Xinhua, for its own part, has criticized foreign media bias and inaccurate reporting, citing an incident during the 2008 Tibetan unrest when Western media outlets used scenes of Nepalese police arresting Tibetan protesters as evidence of Chinese state brutality, with commentary from CNN's Jack Cafferty calling the Chinese goons and thugs. CNN later apologized for the comments, but Richard Spencer of the Sunday Telegraph defended what he conceded was biased Western media coverage of the riots, blaming Chinese authorities for not allowing foreign media access to Tibet during the conflict. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Historical events. Topic: 1989 student movement Xinhua staff struggled to find the right line to use in covering the Tiananmen Square protests of 1989. Although more cautious than People's Daily in its treatment of sensitive topics during that period, such as how to commemorate reformist Communist Party leader Hu Yaobang's April 1989 death and then ongoing demonstrations in Beijing and elsewhere, Xinhua gave some favorable coverage to demonstrators and intellectuals supportive of the movement. Conflict between journalists and top editors over the censorship of stories about the Tiananmen Square crackdown lasted for several days after the military's dispersal of demonstrators on June 4, with some journalists going on strike and demonstrating inside the agency Beijing headquarters. Government oversight of the media increased after the protests. Top editors at the agency bureau in Hong Kong and Macau were replaced with appointees who were pro Beijing. Topic: 2011 Bob Deckett emails. In 2011, CBC reported on leaked flirtatious emails sent by Canada's Conservative MP and Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice Bob Deckett to married Xinhua Toronto correspondent Shi Rong, which prompted both sexual harassment and security breach allegations from opposition members. Deckard apologized, while the Chinese embassy in Ottawa responded to the matter by saying that is in no position to comment on domestic disputes and privacy of those involved. Topic: 2012 Mark Burry resignation. In 2012, Xinhua's Ottawa correspondent Mark Burry resigned after Ottawa bureau chief Zhang Dasheng allegedly requested him to report on the Dalai Lama for Xinhua's internal media, which Burry felt amounted to gathering intelligence for a foreign power. Zhang denied the allegation, telling the Canadian press that Xinhua's policy is to cover public events by public means, and his bureau's job is to cover news events and file the stories to Xinhua's editing rooms, who would then decide which stories would be published. Burry, who had a press pass providing him access to the Parliament of Canada, had previously tried to consult the Canadian Security Intelligence Service CSIS in 2009 on the matter of writing for Xinhua, but was ignored by CSIS. Topic. 2014 Song Bin suicide 
On 7 p.m., 28 April 2014, Vice President and Chief Editor of Xinhua's Enwei Provincial Branch Song Bin was found dead in the newsroom in an apparent suicide. The author for some award-winning reports on social and economic issues, the senior editor had been battling depression before ending his own life by hanging himself. Topic: 2017 Doklam standoff. During the 2017 China-India border standoff, Xinhua's English-language new media program The Spark released a satirical video named the Seven Sins of India. On 16 August 2017, where presenter Dio Wong spoke of Indians having thick skin and pretending to sleep on the matter of the border dispute. Wong went on to claim India was physically threatening Bhutan, and compared India to a robber who breaks into a house and does not leave. An actor in the video portraying India with a turban, beard, and accent sparked allegations of racism and anti Indian sentiment. The video has received strong backlash on Twitter as well as from Indian and Western media. Topic: 2018 Davumi allegations. In January 2018, the New York Times published an investigative report on social media promotions alleging that the US-based company Davumi was providing Twitter followers and retweets to celebrities, businesses and anyone who wants to appear more popular or exert influence online." The article goes on to allege an unnamed Xinhua editor was among the many celebrities and organizations implicated in a transaction with Davumi, in which the company boosted the news agency English language Twitter account with followers and retweets. Cooperation with Associated Press In November 2018, Xinhua News Agency and the Associated Press app of the United States signed a Memorandum of Understanding to expand cooperation with the U.S. News Service, which worried some lawmakers in the U.S. Congress, demanding app to release the text of its Memorandum of Understanding with Xinhua. In respond, AP spokeswoman Lauren Easton said to Washington Post that AP's agreement with Xinhua is to allow it to operate inside China and has no bearing on AP's independence. Xinhua has no access to AP's sensitive information and no influence over AP's editorial products. See also Central News Agency Taiwan. China News Service China Securities Journal China Xinhua News Network Corporation Media of the People's Republic of China